Yeah. Did you start part? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, yeah. What you know, I asked the confirmants over the weekend if they have. Did you have your mic on? Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Oops. Sorry to our internet listeners. I forgot to put my mic on. Um, they, we had one word that describes your feelings about COVID. One word. What would you say? Miserable. That's a good word. I mean, it's a bad good word. Okay. Horrible. Miserable, horrible. Bad. Do you have one word? Okay. You know, for me, I thought annoying. You make plans and then you have to change them all the time. But horrible, miserable, bad. Um, it's, you know, as a, kind of an older guy, um, sometimes when you're young, you think it's going to be like this forever. But this will, we will get through this. We will get past it. It's just nobody knows how long it'll take. I, I keep thinking in a year it'll be a lot, it'll be better. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, we just go on living. And we go on living knowing that there's been trouble before. I mean, at least our country isn't in a big war, and you have food and you have heat in your house. That's good. There's a lot of people in the world that don't even have a country to live in, much less a home. So it just kind of makes you aware of all the suffering that's going on. Let's pray. God, we pray that you would give us more of yourself, more of your love, more of your Holy Spirit to help us to live with uh, wisdom and, and live in your love. We ask this in your name. Amen. So this week, we're not covering quite as much as we did last week. We did these Holy Communion Is Sheets. And I encourage you, did you get one, Olivia? Okay. I have some extra one. Why don't you come up and get this one? And did you get one? Okay. Everybody else got one of the Holy Communion Is Sheets? That's... This is really, really a good summary. And having said that, you know, I'm, I'm over 60 years old, and I still don't understand totally communion. There are so many things going on in communion that you really can't get your head around it. But that's okay. That's okay. We're trying to cover the big things. And on this sheet, there's explanations of each of these statements, but I'm going to start. Holy Communion is remembering, giving thanks, confessing, receiving forgiveness, it's growing, it's joyful celebration, it's being together, it's telling, proclaiming the death and love of Jesus, it's being strengthened to serve God, and it's a time to think about the future. And last week we talked about the Passover meal a little bit. Can you, can somebody tell me what the Passover was? What event? Okay, Livia. Okay. The Moses and the Pharaoh were kind of having a showdown. Moses kept saying, let my people go, the people of Israel from Egypt. And the Pharaoh kept saying, hmm, I don't think so. And so Moses sent a plague. God sent a plague. And the last plague was the death of all firstborn sons. Are you a firstborn son, Jaden? Are you the oldest boy in your family? Yeah, you would have been in danger if you would have been there then. The firstborn sons would die. Nope, the girls got out of this one. But life was miserable for the girls in that time, so it's not like they got out of it. They just got out of that one. Um, and the only people that escaped that were the people 
the Israelites who put blood over the doorposts of their house. So they killed a lamb, took the, some of the blood, and put it on the doorposts. And God told Moses to tell the people to do that so that they would be spared from death. And the houses that did that, the angel of death passed over the house. And that's, so that's where the Passover comes from. And for the people of Israel, this is like the biggest thing that God did in the Old Testament. That he took on the most powerful empire in the world in that region and set his people free from slavery. So when Jesus has the Last Supper with his disciples, and by the way, why is it called the Last Supper? Somebody else? Go ahead, Olivia. Okay. It, he, do you have something, Mark? Okay. G, it was Jesus' last meal before his death and resurrection. So it says, on the night he was betrayed. Now, Jesus got betrayed by at least two main people. Do you know who it was that betrayed Jesus? On the night he was betrayed, it was one guy. And the next day, when he was before the authorities, he was betrayed by somebody else. Does anybody want to guess? On the night he was betrayed, it was Judas. He told the soldiers and religious authorities where Jesus was. And then Jesus was arrested. On the next day, it was Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, acted like he didn't know Jesus. And um, so it was on the night. So think about that. If you were having a meal, if you had a birthday party with all your best friends, and you gave them really good food, and they were all excited about you, and then the next day somebody posted mean things about you on Facebook, you wouldn't really appreciate it, would you? Jesus, on his last night with his disciples, when he knows two people are going to betray him, gives them this meal. The other thing to know about the Last Supper is it was a Passover meal. So... When I think in America of our big meals, I think of Christmas and Easter, but I really think of Thanksgiving because that's when we really pour it on with all the food. And so it was like he was having his last Thanksgiving with them. And it was a special meal. All different things representing all different things, all different memories. You know, the turkeys... Part of Thanksgiving is to remember the Native Americans that helped people through a tough winter. There's all these different things, these different foods, and sometimes there's a reason or behind why this food. And for the people of Israel, on this night, they had a special meal. And God told them, we'll come back. Okay, God told them, from now on, you are to celebrate this meal as a meal of my deliverance of you. And there was different things that meant different things. There was some herbs that reminded them of the bitterness of being slaves. There was lamb that was served to remind them of the lamb who gave his life for their freedom. Um, there, there were other things at the meal. But at this most holy, special, last meal with his disciples... Jesus says, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood. It's a new covenant. My blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Now, when the disciples heard this, they went over their heads. They didn't catch what it meant. Not when it was happening. But after he died and rose again, then it all made sense. So from then on, the biggest meal for the people of God, before it was the Passover, but after the Last Supper, 
the most important meal for Christians is Jesus taking the bread and saying, this is my body given for you, taking the wine, this is my blood shed for you. It's a new covenant, a new agreement, a new contract between people and God. The way you're made right with God and forgiven is through the body and blood of Jesus. It's because Jesus died for our brokenness that we are forgiven and can have life with God forever. Okay, Olivia, you had a point? Um, the most important thing uh, Thanksgiving is made of the squash Christmas. Is what? Squash. Squash. Okay, the natives brought squash. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You know that... Uh, isn't sweet corn come from Native Americans too? Yeah. Yep. We lived with, uh, on the edge of a reservation for three years. It was very interesting. They're very friendly people. And very interesting. Um, so another thing that happened, two other things that happened on Jesus last night with his disciples, one of them is in the lesson I'm supposed to cover today, is Jesus washed their feet. Have you ever washed anybody's feet? Somebody older with dirty feet? Then, then it was the job that the least important person in the house was supposed to do. You have people who walk miles, and maybe it's hot, and their feet are dirty and smelly, and they probably got dust and little mud on them. Jesus takes the towel to wash the disciples' feet. And Peter says, no way. You're the most important person here. You shouldn't be washing my feet. I should be washing yours. And Jesus says, no. I'm doing this as an example. Because if I'm the most important person and I'm willing to wash your feet, you're going to be called to do, asked to do stuff that you say, well, I don't know if I want to do that. And he says, this is an example. Love one another as I've loved you. Serve one another as I have served you. He would also give the great commandment on, during the Last Supper. Uh, no, he said, a new commandment I give you. Does anybody remember what the commandment he gave at the Last Supper was? Love one another as I have loved you. He said earlier, serve one another as I've served you. Now he says, love one another as I have loved you. So he's taken the most important things at that last meal, things he wants them to remember. It's kind of a scary thing to think about, but if you knew you were having a last supper with your family, and you knew it was the last meal, think about it. Jesus knew it was his last meal before his death and resurrection. What would you say? What would you say to your parents? What would you say to your brothers and sisters? Well, that, that's what this Last Supper is. It's Jesus' last meal. When he knows some of his disciples are going to betray him, he loves them to the end. He serves them to the end. And that's hard for us to do in our own strength and power. But with our faith in God... In our trust in Jesus, God himself will be at work in us to help us to love and serve others. Now I'm reminded our church's mission statement is making Christ's love known by equipping all ages to love and to lovingly serve God and people. So love and serve comes from the Last Supper. It's one of the main teachings of Jesus. And communion can be a meal that helps us know we're forgiven and loved, and then hopefully we can forgive and love other people. So any questions on that so far? The Last Supper. Oh, here I have some questions. Well, here's another question. 
what would you, if you had a last supper, what would you want to make or have your parents make for the supper? Do you have a favorite food? What would it be? Okay. Okay. Chicken without breading on it. You don't like the breading stuff. Anybody else? What's that? Or chicken oats. Uh, what is that? Ch- what is that called again? Spicy wings, chicken wings, buffalo wings. Have you had some with chili on it before? Or anybody want pizza for their last meal? I think I'd like a nice steak. Well, what's that? Turkey? Okay. That's good. It's good for you, too, usually. What's your least favorite food? Steak. Oh, really? You must not have had a good one. Anybody else on favorite or unfavorite foods? This is really important that... Jesus wants us to hear the pastor or whoever serving the wafers will say the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And you're really supposed to hear that for you. It's for you that Christ died. It's you that he forgives. It's you that he loves. And I hope you can hear that when you you come for communion. I was thinking tonight, today I'd probably show you this cup. I'll put my mask on so if you want you can come close. So this is what holds the bread. This is called a paten. Now right now we're using those individual cups. So it's a bit different. But eventually we'll get back to this with... And it's unleavened bread. I'm sorry, I should have made that a little bit more of a point. Why is the bread not real bread? It's more like crackers. Do you know why that is? Because in the Passover meal, God said, I want you to make this meal. I want you to eat it fast. Some people say it was the first fast food meal that's recorded in history. Um, And to make bread, has anybody made bread at home? Is it easy? Is it hard? Is it quick? Or do you have to wait? You have to wait. So it's not really good fast food if you have to make it from scratch. It's kind of a slow food. Well, that's why they ate unleavened bread. is because the angel of death was coming. They needed to eat. They needed to be ready to take off in a moment's notice. And that's why when we serve the bread... It's the thin slices usually because there's no yeast in it. And that goes all the way back. Jesus was celebrating a Passover meal with his disciples. It goes all the way back to the Passover meal. Now, this is called the chalice. A lot of words are, are Latin words because our ancestors, uh, the missionaries, came from, from Italy and other places in the south. Have you seen this before? Do you know what's inside of it? Okay. Okay. But now I'm going to confuse you. Why is it split like that? Yep. So the smaller pocket is usually grape juice and usually it's yellow or white. And then this side is wine. And another big Latin word is called intinction, which when we do communion by intinction, you receive the wafer, and then you dip it in here. Don't put your fingers in the wine or the grape juice, but do get the bread in, and then some of it will get soaked up in the wafer, and then you eat it. Okay? So that's called intinction. Nor- normally, well, 
We do, we do communion a couple different ways. We do intinction usually if it's a loud, loud, large crowd or we're trying to um, kind of move along. It's a little quicker. Um, the other kind is when you come to the rail and kneel and then we serve the bread followed by the wine or grape juice. And actually, I said that wrong. Usually, if you want grape juice, if we're up at the rail, you have to pick up the grape juice in the aisle. Because if you come with an empty cup, we're going to pour wine in it. And then, what I said earlier, we got two kinds. There are two kinds of chalices. This one is the intinction for dipping in. And it has grape juice and wine. The other chalice is one that pours. And the one that pours is only wine in it. So in the, if you want communion, then you bring up a filled grape juice cup up front. Now, have you figured out yet? Well, you don't really have the choice. I'm sorry, because of the pandemic, we're doing these. And these are grape juice. Grape juice keeps longer. Um, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. These don't. And then on the top is the wafer. And you have to be careful when you do this because you just want to get the very, very top thin. There's two layers of tops here. One is uh, the cellophane, which is what you take off for the wafer. See, and you don't want to be in a hurry like I am right now. There, I got a hold of it. See how thin this is right on here. It has some words. It says, uh, this is my body, which is broken for you. And this is, do this in remembrance of me. So that's just for the wafer. So they're pretty small. They're smaller than the normal ones. Now, I'm not doing this as communion. I'm just eating and drinking to show you. And then you pull off this tin foil. And sometimes it comes off easy and sometimes not so much. And then I'll say, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And then I say, now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you to live and to walk in his grace. Now one of the points on communion was it feeds you and helps you grow. It helps you grow spiritually. And that's why we say, and now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you to live and to walk in his grace. Okay? Now some churches have communion every week. Can you believe it? Most Catholic churches have communion every week. It's a sacrament, so it's special. Does anybody know the meaning of the word sacrament? It's, it's something common with a promise of God. Something regular with God's word or God's promise. And the Lutheran church, we have two sacraments that use normal everyday things with the promise of God. Do you know what they are? Two sacraments? I'll give you a hint. Baptism. Yep. Baptism and communion are two ways that God makes promises to us uh, with regular substances. So baptism and communion. Baptism connects us to Jesus. Communion helps keep us connected and helps us to understand his forgiveness. Some churches celebrate once a month or less communion. I think that's pretty good. I'm at 25 minutes. Oh, I, I still have some questions here. So it's very important that as you receive communion that you believe that Jesus died for your sins. It's not a snack. It's not nothing. It's, 
it's a, it's a real reminder and promise to you on forgiveness. So um, you should take it seriously. Now, most people don't smile when they come for communion, but you could because you're going to receive forgiveness, and that's something to celebrate. On the other hand, as you come forward, you're kind of mindful, you know, Jesus had to die for me. That's a pretty big thing. And I'm not going to take it lightly because this is, this is pretty powerful what God did. Why do we celebrate communion? And this answer has to remember the suffering and death of Jesus. Here's a question. Finish this Bible verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever... Do you know that? Do you know that one? Whoever believes in me... Uh, God, for God so loved the world, he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Um, so we come to communion... We're face to face with the fact that God loves you and Jesus gave his life for you. And because of that, you're forgiven. So I'm at 27 minutes. I might not have started it on time. Any questions? When, when is it that you're going to receive First Communion? Do you know? Okay. Okay. Mm, close. November 1st, first day of November, which is also All Saints Day. But so November 1st, now if you're sick or you can't make it, you can do First Communion on another time. It just, um, it won't, just won't be with everybody else. And I think in the past we've had families come to the altar together, but we're not doing altar communion right now because we don't want people too close to each other so you'll be using the packets and having it in the pews with your family eventually when COVID settles down or there's a vaccine or something then we'll go back to doing it our normal way okay well I think I'm going to close with a prayer God we thank you for your sacraments baptism and communion most of all, we thank you for your love for us and your promises to us. Thank you, Jesus, for inviting us to be part of the family of God. Help us to follow you, to trust you, to love you. Amen. Okay, I'm not sure when the next class is. Your parents will be notified on that. It might be the 25th. But on the 25th is confirmation, and church is going to kind of be wildly busy that day. So um, one more lesson, and then... Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Projects. Have you thought of what you're doing for a project yet for communion? Oh, it's already done. What is it? Okay. Okay, you know, the, anybody else know what they're doing yet for their project? Yes, you can do a painting. And it should be something that reminds you of the meaning of communion. Um, a painting is a very good idea. And you know what? You're not going to get a grade on it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try hard. But you're not going to get a grade on it. So if it's something you like doing or something you want to do, go for it. But do be thinking about what you're going to do. Because you think I would have learned by now, but if you start stuff earlier before the deadline, then you don't get so anxious when it's close. So if you have an idea and a plan, go for it. Okay, thank you. i got to shut the uh, recording off. We might have been live on the Internet, too. Did, oh, I should, uh, I should look it up and see if it came over.